This is something that happened a few years ago. I buy things on eBay here and there and have been doing so for years. I like to collect things like sports memorabilia and occasionally I bid on auctions. One time I saw this autographed football that was signed by one of my favorite players. It had zero bids and the starting bid was pretty low. I expected it to go way up, but I entered my maximum bid and then moved on, thinking maybe I had a shot at winning it. The auction still had several days left. Over the next few days, I actually forgot all about it. Then, I got a notification that I had won the auction and I could pay for the signed ball now. When I looked, I couldn't believe it. Not one single other person had bid on the ball, and I had won. I don't remember the exact price. I think it was maybe like $10.00. It was probably worth a lot more, maybe over $50. I was really excited and paid the money. The very next night, though, I was at home when my phone rang. During this time, I had a landline phone that I had for years. I did not recognize the number on the caller ID, so I didn't answer it. What followed shortly after was a message. A man's voice came onto my answering machine, and he said that he was trying to reach me and mention my name. He said that I had won his auction for the football and unfortunately nobody else bid on it. Then he said that I was getting way too good of a deal and it wasn't fair at all, but he was going to do me a favor and mail it anyways. He went on to say that he expects me to leave him a very good review after this. Now this rubbed me the wrong way. I didn't like how he called me up on my personal phone to say this. I won his auction fair and square. If he didn't want the risk of somebody paying $10 for it, then he shouldn't have started the bidding so low. He knew the risks. I went on eBay and looked at some other listings of the same player's autograph on a football. They were going for a little over $50, so the guy lost out on about 40 bucks. It's not that big of a deal. Just two days later, I received the football in the mail. It was fast shipping, because I guess the guy lived in the same state as me. After receiving the football, it was packaged well and just how it looked online. I went on eBay to leave the good review that the seller wanted so badly. To be honest, I really didn't want to leave him a good review after what he did. It kind of annoyed me. But when I logged into eBay, I noticed that he had already left me a negative review. On eBay, sellers and buyers can leave each other reviews. You can leave it positive, negative, or neutral. This affects your feedback, and people are less likely to buy or sell to you if you have a bad rating. Mine had been perfect to that point, and his was pretty good. I think it was like 99% positive. His negative review of me said, buyer got way too good of a deal. Clearly, he was upset about it, but I did not feel that it was fair for him to leave me a bad review. What was I supposed to do? I bid and I won. Did he expect me to offer to pay more for no reason? It angered me that he left me a bad review, so I left him a bad review. I said what happened. I said, I won the auction from this seller for a good deal. He then called my home phone complaining and demanded that I leave him a good review. He sent me a message after this, which I ignored. I didn't even open it. Then, the next day, he called me again. I didn't answer, and he left another message. This one was very angry. He berated me for about three minutes straight. I didn't even listen to the whole thing and deleted it. But this didn't stop him. He called me again several times the next day. I got frustrated, and luckily I had call blocker installed on my landline. I blocked his number so that he would finally stop bothering me. For several days, everything was fine. But then, one night, I was at home, and out of nowhere got a knock on my front door. I walked down to the front door, but before opening it, looked outside. It was a man who I did not recognize. I didn't know why he would be here. I answered the door, and the man standing there mentioned my name and asked if that was me. I said yes. He then told me that he sold me a football on eBay not long ago. As soon as I heard that, I slammed the door right in his face. This caused him to start aggressively banging on my door. I yelled at him to go away or I was calling the cops. He was yelling and demanding that I give him the ball back, saying that I scammed him. I couldn't believe this guy. I'm not sure if he was really just mad about the ball at this point or if he was just mad at me. He kept standing there and knocking on my door every so often. After he didn't leave for over 10 minutes, I called the police on him. When they arrived about 10 minutes after that, the man was still there. They spoke with him, and he gave his side of the story, which I'm not even sure what that was. An officer came inside and spoke to me, and said that the man outside kept claiming that I scammed him and stole his autographed football. I told the officer the whole story, and I showed him eBay proof on my phone. 
After a while, the police ruled in favor of me. They said that the transaction was fair and I owned the football. They told the man that he had to leave my property and told him not to come back. Eventually, the man agreed and left. After that, I never heard from him again. I still have the football, and every time I look at it, I laugh when I remember the crazy story that goes with it. Hey everyone, we truly appreciate your support. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel for more upcoming stories and exciting content. I buy things on eBay all the time. I've bought things from video games to phones and even computers. I've also sold a couple of items as well. This is something that took place just last year. My mom's birthday was coming up and I wanted to get her a new phone because the one that she was using was old and slow. She uses an iPhone and I think she had like a 7 or 8 or something. I was looking up newer ones and was trying really hard to find a great deal. I should have just paid a fair price and bought one from one of those companies that refurbish them. That way you know what you're getting and everything is handled professionally. But instead, I got carried away trying to get the best deal. I was constantly scouring the latest listings and auctions. I found one that was a really good deal. It was selling for about $100 less than I would expect to pay for the phone. It was still several hundred dollars though. There were a few pictures of the phone in what appeared to be the person's house. In the listing, the seller said that it worked great but they had gotten a different phone and no longer needed it. It seemed legit, and I looked at the seller, and they didn't have any other items for sale, but did have a 99% rating. When I saw where the seller was located, I noticed that it was in a city very close to me, only like 30 minutes away. That meant it would probably only take like a day or two to ship. I decided to buy it, and felt really good with the money that I would be saving. A couple of days later, and the phone arrived in the mail. As soon as I unboxed it though, I realized that I had been scammed. The phone that I received was not even close to what I bought. It was one of those cheap Android phones that you can get for like $40 at Walmart. I really couldn't believe it. I went onto eBay and compared what it said I bought versus what I received. I had gotten scammed badly. I contacted the seller demanding an explanation. When I did, I got no response. After not hearing back from him, I contacted eBay and reported his profile as well. I now saw that he had another listing of the same phone that I bought. I left a negative review warning anybody else and telling them what had happened. I hoped that nobody else would fall for his scam. After several days of trying to contact the seller and communicating with eBay, things finally got resolved. I was able to get a refund from my bank and I was told that the account got suspended as well. I was able to buy my mom an actual iPhone for her birthday. I was still mad about what happened though. But not long after I found out the account had been banned, I think the same night or else the next one, it was late at night and I was literally in bed about to fall asleep. I was on my phone until I got tired. It was probably a little bit after midnight and suddenly I heard a loud bang at the back of my house. During that time, I rented a smaller house which I lived by myself in. I got up from my bed and walked to the doorway. The sound came from the back of my house on the other side. Then I heard it again. It was followed by another bang, which I could hear was from the kitchen window at the back of the house. My bedroom was at the front of the house, so it was a ways away, but I could still hear it very clearly because of how loud it was. Somebody was there. I heard whoever was there start hitting the window repeatedly. I didn't waste any time and went back inside my bedroom and locked the door behind me. Then I got my phone and called the police. I told them that it sounded like somebody was trying to break into my house. Shortly after, I heard glass breaking. They had succeeded in breaking in. I let the police know, and they said that some officers should arrive shortly. Then I heard more loud noises. This time, inside. It sounded like whoever was inside was just destroying things or hitting everything in sight. I heard glass breaking, chairs falling over, and other loud noises. This went on for about a minute straight, and then stopped. Things became very silent after. I heard a little bit of noise coming from the back of the house as if somebody was walking. Then that stopped too, and everything was completely silent. I remained in my room until the police got there. When I came out of my room, I saw that everything in my kitchen had been all messed up. My back window was smashed, glass was all over the place, and lots of other things were on the floor. Several dishes and cups had been smashed. My table and chairs in the kitchen were all knocked over. Lots of things from the cabinet were on the floor, 
and I saw several dents in the cabinets and furniture. They basically just trashed my kitchen and left. I told the police everything that I could, and then they left. I stayed with my parents for the rest of the night, and the entire next week as well. My window got replaced, and I got some new furniture. I only lived in that house for a few months after, and I don't live there anymore. Since then, everything's been fine, but I never found out who did it. I truly believe that it was the person who scammed me on eBay. I think they were angry that I got their account taken down. If they were running that blatant of a scam, there's no telling what they could do. Plus, they knew my address from shipping me the phone, and I had seen that they lived not very far away from me. Luckily, I don't live there anymore. Hopefully, nobody else gets scammed. Several months ago, I sold my PlayStation 5 on eBay. My friend was getting rid of his PS5 for an Xbox, so he sold it to me for a really good price. His PlayStation 5 was a little bit nicer than the version that I had, so I decided to sell mine. I listed it for a good price on eBay as a buy it now rather than an auction. Somebody bought it after just two days, and the very next day, I packaged it up really good and shipped it. I sent it to the address that was given from the eBay account that bought it from me. Now three days after I shipped the PlayStation, and four days after it was sold, I got a message on eBay from the buyer. He told me that he recently moved and forgot to put his new address on his eBay account. Then he asked me that I ship it to his new address instead. I responded and told him that I already shipped the PlayStation several days ago and that it was too late. The guy freaked out, saying that I should give him a refund because he wasn't going to get it. I told him that he should have realized that, either before he bought it or within the first day. What was I supposed to do? Sit around waiting for his blessing for me to ship it? I mean, normally, people want things shipped as fast as possible after they buy it. He said that he was going to report me to eBay, but that didn't really scare me because I knew I had done nothing wrong. I told the guy that the package will have his name on it, so he should either go to his old address and pick it up, or contact whoever now lives there and ask them to send it to him. In my mind, that was a very logical solution. Obviously, if it was at the wrong address, there was a chance that somebody would steal it, but I mailed it in a box where it wasn't obvious that it was a PS5. The guy did not seem to think my ideas were good. He just told me that he needed a refund, and he kept threatening me, saying that he would have my eBay account banned. I told him that I wasn't going to refund him. Over the next few days, the guy kept harassing me, sending me messages. He kept saying that I had to give him a refund. He really wanted the money, but I wasn't going to give it to him. I just ignored him. So about a week later, I was looking at some of the messages that he sent me, and I decided to look him up, just for the heck of it. His username seemed to be his actual name. It was a first name, an underscore, and then a last name and a bunch of numbers. The last name was somewhat unique sounding, so I thought that I might be able to find him. I wanted to know what this guy looked like that was harassing me so much. I went onto Facebook and entered his name. Just one result came up, and it was a younger-looking man. His page was public, so I could see everything that he posted and stuff, and he was quite active. I scrolled down just a little bit and saw a post that nearly blew my mind. He had posted a picture of a PlayStation 5 with the caption, Just got this bad boy in the mail. Hit me up if you want to play some COD. The PlayStation looked just like the one that I had sold, and it was dated just three days after I had mailed the PlayStation and the very same day that the guy told me that he had the wrong address. This guy was totally trying to scam me. It was a pretty bad attempt too, to be honest. I screenshotted the post and then sent it to him on eBay. The guy claimed that it wasn't him. Then he backtracked and said that it was his friend's PS5, not his. Then he backtracked again and called me a curse word. After that, I never heard from him again. I live in a major city. Born and raised here, I'm very familiar with my surroundings. I'm also aware to the fact that my city is one of the worst hubs for human trafficking and living here can be very, very dangerous. Despite all this, I have taken pride in knowing that I do everything I can to remain as safe as possible. I've had close calls before. Shady landlord gave a stranger copies of my key and a man tried to enter as soon as I was alone. And other horrifying tales and consider myself an avid murderino. I'm pretty prepped. At the time, I had two things of pepper spray, one in my favorite jacket pocket, one velcroed to my desk at work. I also had two trusty pocket knives, one always on me, 
one in my car door pocket. Oh, my taser never leaves my bag also. I avoid shady situations and despite being a small lady, I know my stuff. Yay for self-defense classes. My point is, I'm a very paranoid small chihuahua and I still got into a scary situation. It is summer and hot out. I've got a date with my favorite gal pal and I swing by her place to pick her up. She tells me she has a job interview to go to first and I agree to go with her. No big deal. She's a sweet tiny thing from a small town in the Midwest and very new to the city life and the wild things that can happen here. As we drive into a different city, I ask her about the job. It's a modeling gig. Oh, cool, for who? I found an ad on Craigslist, it's just sport clothes. The Craigslist thing sets a small distance alarm off in my head, but I push it to the side. Where the heck are we going anyway? When we pull up to a Starbucks a bit outside of the city, the alarm in my head becomes a little less faint. Relax, I tell myself. I've gone to legit job interviews at coffee shops before. There's always been a good reason. We arrive first, late still, but end up waiting about 15 minutes. Kind of weird, but Kat's relieved we're not the rude ones when she gets a text saying he's here. I look around the Starbucks and outside at the parking lot trying to figure out who the mystery man can be when I notice a tall, well-dressed man step out of a black SUV. He smiles at us as he approaches and I figured that's our guy. I could have sworn that SUV had been parked there for a while. I ask Kat if she wants me to step in line and grab her a drink, but she practically begs me to stay with her. Okay, I can do that. I didn't think it looked very professional, but I don't protest. The man, named Jack, leads us to an isolated table outside and doesn't say much about my presence other than it was okay for me to be there. I get on my phone and shoot a text to my fiancé explaining where I was and what I was doing. He shoots back a, be careful, and I sit pretty to watch the show. Jack had this strange accent that I couldn't quite place my finger on. Looking back, I'm not even sure if it was real. He starts asking Kat the usual questions and I notice she's absolutely bombing the interview. She doesn't have much experience and didn't bother to bring a portfolio, but despite this, he doesn't seem to care. The alarm in my head isn't much louder than a whisper, but it completely blares when he asks if she'd be comfortable doing lingerie shoots as well. Dear sweet cat says she doesn't have an issue with that, but would prefer to mostly do sports clothing like they had discussed earlier. She asks to see some of his work and he pulls up a lingerie Instagram. All lingerie, no clothing at all. He holds it in front of her face and pulls it away immediately, and when she's asked if there would be more she'd be doing, Jack goes, That was it, and hurries the conversation along. He says we need to go right now to his studio at a place he briefly mentioned the name of to sign papers and get everything squared away. It has to be done today. He's not working tomorrow and his co-workers won't do it right. I absolutely hate everything about this and I'm trying to glare some sense into her but nothing is getting through. Cat agrees and he turns his attention to me. Do you want to be a part of this too? I immediately know that nothing about this is professional. I look down at my beat up docks and green cargo pants, a shirt that has flames and a slightly edgy logo on it and can't help but scoff. Uh, that's not really my thing. I'm just the ride. He studies me for a second and then says we can all ride with him, directing his attention to Cat. No, I don't want to leave my car. We'll follow you. He looks offended that I butt in but asks where we parked. Right in the front of the store. I got it. I pulled Cat to the jeep and make sure we walk behind him. As soon as we get into the car, I lock the doors and try to keep from freaking out. We are not going. This doesn't feel right. What about the lingerie? Everything I say she has an excuse for. We pull out of the parking lot and I follow Jack's SUV, but the whole time I'm trying to figure out how to get out of this. Kat doesn't like the lingerie, but this could be a door for her and she desperately needs the money. What if it is legit? He was alone anyways. You have your knife and spray, right? Of course I do, but... I'm 5'2 to this man 6'3 and Jack could very much have friends and I don't want to possibly hurt or end up hurt or worse. 
I realize at this point that Kat is insane. We drive along as I try to talk to her and we start driving out into the desert, the middle of absolute nowhere. There's a divider in the road that prevents U-turns and I get an eerie feeling that Jack knew to take us this way. I'm absolutely desperate at this point. I pull out my phone and snap a picture of Jack's SUV license plate. I upload it to Snapchat where friends can see it. Kat starts getting uncomfortable when she realizes how far we've driven. The name of the place he mentioned springs back into my head and I know it's familiar from somewhere. A commercial jingle that's distinct but catchy. It's a restaurant or a hotel or something. He wouldn't have a studio there. Just please look it up. So she does. It's a casino. Unless this man has rented out a space, he wouldn't have a studio there. It's not consistent with the information he gave us at all. Kat is freaked out at this point. I tell her that this isn't uncommon and he was trying to confuse us the entire time. Throughout the entire interview, she had a confused and hesitant look on her face like this wasn't what she was promised or expecting at all. Kat finally agrees that we need to get out of there and I start to breathe easy again. I notice that every five minutes or so there's a break in the medians. It's a rough quick stop and turnaround but it'll have to do. So I do and we absolutely gun it. Kat gets a call from Jack and at first she ignores it. I convince her to call back and she gets nothing at all like the number had blocked her. It didn't go through. I tell her to screenshot the Craigslist ad but she can't find it anywhere. It's like every trace of Jack disappeared. We go back to her apartment. I tell her she needs to report it. She promises she will, but later because she doesn't want her husband to know. He didn't even know she had this interview to begin with, and she didn't want him to know what happened. If I hadn't driven her, she would have gone alone without telling a soul, and who knows what could have happened. I tried not to scold her too badly, but I just reminded her that our city was very different and much more dangerous than where she's from. Sweet cat, I hope you're a little more awakened to the world and I'm sorry for that. It's been a few months since we split ways and I'm still worried to death over all the oblivious, crazy things you get into. Since the incident, I now have three pepper sprays, one for the car, and a new pocket knife to carry around. Thanks, Dad. She's gorgeous. I'm almost four months pregnant and now finally ready to get out of this dangerous city. Please, 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 my dear friends, be safe out there. It's such a scary world and be incredibly careful with Craigslist.